Dysphagia means a difficulty in swallowing, which may be perceived anywhere from the mouth to the stomach. It is grossly divided into oropharyngeal dysphagia and esophageal dysphagia, which each may have mechanical or neuromuscular causes. Oropharyngeal causes include tonsillitis, stomatitis, and malignancy of the tongue, while pharyngeal causes may include foreign bodies, pharyngeal abscesses, or even a pharyngeal pouch, known as Zenker's diverticulum, as well as malignancies of the wall or of the thyroid. Cervical lymphadenopathy may also be a mechanical cause for oropharyngeal dysphagia. A potential neuromuscular cause includes post-stroke and bulbar palsy. Esophageal causes can again include foreign bodies, strictures from esophagitis, radiotherapy, scleroderma or Crohn's disease, and may also be caused by esophageal atresia, which is the incomplete development of the esophagus. Another cause is a hiatal hernia, and malignancy is also a cause here, typically occurring over time, which may be esophageal or a gastric malignancy. Neuromuscular causes include achalasia, which is a condition where the smooth muscle of the esophagus fails to relax. In this instance, the lower esophageal sphincter. This means that swallowed content cannot pass easily into the stomach. In contrast to the norm in dysphagia, achalasia often presents with difficulty with swallowing liquids. Another condition is myasthenia gravis, a condition where antibodies target the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors at the neuromuscular junction, which results in a lack of muscle contraction. Dysphagia can manifest in several different ways, the most common of which is difficulty with swallowing solid foods, which is often described as getting stuck. Patients may refer that they have difficulty in controlling food or saliva in the mouth, which may manifest as dribbling. And they may also often have aspiration, meaning where food or liquids go down the wrong way, i.e. into the lungs, resulting in coughing fits and potentially pneumonia. Other signs and symptoms include weight loss and voice changes after swallowing. Another term related to dysphagia is odinophagia, which means pain on swallowing. This is suggestive of carcinoma, but may also be caused by infections and inflammation. Endoscopic investigation is the primary tool used to investigate dysphagia, and a biopsy may be taken if the lesions are thought to be malignant. In some instances, an endoscopy may be contraindicated. In these cases, a barium swallow study may be done, examples of which include Zenker's diverticulum, which is easily ruptured. Other investigations include manometry, which is where a tube with pressure sensors is inserted into the esophagus to see how the muscle and sphincters are contracting. 24-hour pH monitoring may also be included, which measures how much acid comes up from the stomach in a 24-hour period. Patients who have dysphagia and are aged 55 or above with weight loss and either upper abdominal pain, reflux or dyspepsia should be referred for an endoscopy within two weeks. Non-urgently, if they have hematemesis or are aged 55 or above with upper abdominal pain or treatment-resistant dyspepsia without weight loss. Mechanical issues may be stented or may have a palliative referral for stenting or even for chemotherapy. On the other hand, motility disorders will often be seen by the swallowing specialists or the speech and language therapy team. There are procedures done to ease symptoms without changes to the physiology of the swallow, which may include alteration of food texture, postural techniques, or even prosthetics. Some techniques do change the swallowing physiology, such as speech and language therapy exercises and swallowing maneuvers.